feeling well hello there my lemon drops and welcome back to the lemonade stand or welcome if you are new my name is brianna i'm a certified personal trainer a big huge biology nerd and a registered dietitian to be I have assembled you all here today so that you all can watch me react to and critique beach body workouts while I educate you in the process. Before we proceed, if you love science-based health, wellness, and fitness education with some lulls and some dry sarcasm along the way, hit that subscribe button and join the lemonade stand. I would seriously love to have you here. Without further ado, let's make lemonade. All right, so let's uh, dive into this first one here. Okay, this one looks familiar to me. I think I did something, an exercise similar to this one in the video where I, uh, the one where I did, I tried the Beachbody Fire and Flow sample workout from a, from a little while back. I just don't think we used, I'm trying to remember correctly. I don't think I used the band. We also, I think I held the dumbbell a different way. I think I held it in both of my hands as opposed to just one hand. Um, and I didn't do that that kind of reach thing that, that this person is doing. So it reminds me of that one from Fire and Flow, but it's not exactly like it, but it is similar. So that's why I'm not sure if this program is specifically from Fire and Flow. If any of you know, please chime off and let me know. If this exercise is not from Fire and Flow, however, then seeing this is kind of more evidence to me that these super trainers a lot of the time just kind of recycle and remake, like put new twists on old workouts from former programs because they have to give birth to these programs on a rolling basis. And I've always suspected like, okay, well, how many different ways can you do a bicep curl? You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know if this is not from Fire and Flow, then I feel like maybe Fire and Flow was definitely used as inspiration is what I'm trying to say. So here's something that's weird about this one. Aside from everything, she's got a resistance band around her ankles. She's extending one leg behind her while she's balancing on her other leg, all while simultaneously simultaneously holding a small dumbbell in one hand while drawing the dumbbell in, then extending her arm back out. Um, <laughs> this is a lot. And quite frankly, I am afflicted with confusion because it so much is happening and I don't really understand. I don't really know what exactly is supposed to be going on. Like what exactly is this supposed to be doing? You know, like when it's a bicep curl, okay, the target is biceps. Oh, you're doing uh, push ups. Okay, the target is probably, you know, your push muscles, your chest, some shoulders. Oh, you're doing squats. So I guess you probably want to, you know, hit up the quads, the glutes. <laughs> but this one is just... This is a mystery. This is a conundrum. <laughs> that rear leg kick thing that she's doing, it's not really like enough to be a good glute kickback. And then I'm not sure at all if the goal for the arm is supposed to be like a push or a pull. When she's drawing her arm back in, she's kind of doing like a rowing motion, but it's not really doing much of anything for her back because of the, of the direction that the weight is coming from. If she were doing this and uh, like pulling a band, like pulling a band toward her with this same motion, then her those pull muscles would be doing a lot more work. But because she's holding the dumbbell this way, just in her hand, this is probably doing more shoulder work than back work. Although I don't know, maybe that's the goal. I don't know. It would also be engaging her back more if she were bending over like if she were doing like a you know dumbbell row but she's not she's kind of standing upright I hear a commotion behind me. It sounds like Onyx. So yeah, I don't I don't know what this is. <laughs> I couldn't think of an alternative to show you guys so instead um I'm just gonna sip this lemonade. Here's the next one. So someone sent this to me and the very first time I watched it, thank you for sending this by the way, and thank you to everybody who sends me stuff. The very first time I watched this though, I thought that I was watching two people do not very good uh, Sphinx push-ups. Then you read the on-screen text and then it says something about tricep push-ups. So I guess tricep push-ups is, is what they're doing. This program has been challenging, but we have seen so much improvement in our strength and we are able to do moves we weren't even able to modify before, tricep push-ups. And even though we should be finishing the programs today, took our rest days earlier in the week because I was not feeling well, 
I'm still so incredibly proud of both of us for sticking with this program for the entire eight weeks. So, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and come out and say it. They're not doing tricep push-ups. Their hands are spaced way too far apart. Hers are, um, especially. And the thing that differentiates a tricep push-up from a standard push-up is the hand position. A tricep push-up, as the name suggests, is meant to emphasize the tricep more than standard push-ups, but you have to position your hands correctly in order to do this. Like I said, when I first saw this, I thought they were attempting to do do um, a sphinx push-up, which is a push-up variation, which looks kind of crazy because your hands are kind of positioned out in front of you uh, further than a regular push-up. They're pretty challenging, which is the point, you know, because it's physical activity. You don't go to the gym for a tea party, right? But again, based on the on-screen text, she says tricep push-up. So I'm assuming that that's what they're attempting to be doing here. This is a um, another uh, opportunity that we have where we can actually see, um, see we can see the screen on like the bod, beach body on man, cause they're following bod. So I zoomed way in to the TV and based on what we can see on the TV screen, I think the people on the TV are actually doing like actual tricep push-ups. So this leads me to believe that the two people that the people that we're looking at in this video are are doing the best they can, but struggling to do tricep push-ups. So they're doing some kind of awkward tweaks with their bodies to compensate for the fact that they're having such a hard time to be able to do them correctly, if that makes sense. Now, I wanna make it clear right now that lacking strength is not a bad thing. We are not all perfect in the gym. Sometimes modifications are necessary and that's perfectly okay. It's actually a good thing. If you can't do the like full version of the exercise correctly and safely, a modification allows you to work your way up to the full version, if you will, without getting hurt and still challenging yourself. Now, if anybody were to ask me, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a dumb broad on the internet, but if you were to ask me, hey, how can they fix this and make it so that they're actually doing a tricep push-up, the biggest recommendation I would actually give them, first of all, drop down to their knees. You can do a tricep push-up from your knees, that's okay. I do them like that sometimes myself and I have my clients do it like that sometimes if they need to. The other recommendation I would give is to, you know, position your hands closer so that you're actually doing a tricep push-up. The last thing I wanna say about this is uh, slightly unrelated, but I, I just thought it was interesting, so I wanted to call attention to it. Let's read the on-screen text, because this is an Instagram story, so let's read the on-screen text like for the second story when it switches. It says, I am so excited to start our part two program. And she put an and sign twice. And I first I thought that that was an accident because she did that on the last story too, two times. Maybe that's how she types. Maybe I've been typing and wrong this whole time. I'm so excited to start our part two program and we have decided we will be hosting an exclusive test group for it. And then underneath it, it says test groups are 100% where we see the best results. Why? Because we all start day one together and she did it again and, and go through the entire program together for the very first time. Maybe that's just how she, how she types out. I don't know. I don't know. That's weird to me. I don't know why that's bothering me so much. Stay focused, Brianna. So I want to, I want to pay attention to what she just said there. She just said that the test group offers the best results because they're all doing it together for the first time. You know, sometimes watching Beachbody consultants is like watching a car crash slowly, but like like in a movie, right? Because we're all sitting here on the outside watching the calamity unfold on the screen. I think what she just said broke the fourth wall. I read that and I was not surprised at that at all. I was like, of course the test group offers the best results every time a new program comes out. Because since the last program, everybody has regained all the weight that they lost and then some because these beach body programs, in my opinion, the fitness and the nutrition ones are not sustainable. So whenever the next beach body fitness program comes out, inevitably, because it inevitably will, because they pump out these programs about as frequently as my mom asks me when I'm going to give her a grandchild. And all these consultants and like dedicated Beachbody uh, customers just eat that shit up. It's bizarre because what happens is a new program comes out, everybody does a new program, gets excited about it, and then they lose whatever weight they're gonna lose. And then like it's done, it's over because it's not like a, a lifestyle change. It's just doing something for a few days or a few weeks. And then whatever weight they lose, they gain it back because it's not sustainable. And then the next program comes out and then the cycle repeats itself. Every single one of them, they're all on this hamster wheel of just diet culture and undue influence with just a dash of orthorexia. 
and none of them even realize it. I, I know, I know I just kind of went deep just there, but it, I don't know, it just made me, I just thought it was interesting when she was just like, oh, well, the test group offers the best results. And I was like, yeah, I mean, like to me, and I bet to a lot of you watching this, it's probably obvious why it offers the best results because it's the first time you're doing it, the first time you're trying it after they all regain the weight that they lost from the last Beachbody program that was supposed to be amazing and incredible. Here's the exercise demonstration that I was gonna show you guys. I didn't really offer much of a segue. I just kind of kept running my mouth, sorry. <laughs> I'm not doing anything different than what they were doing. I'm just showing you tricep pushups on my knees, uh, which is how I would recommend them if you're a beginner or if they're um, you know, still difficult for you. Notice my hand position there. My hands are positioned closer together as opposed to in a standard push-up. So this next girl has me blocked <laughs> and her outfit is also very cute. Isn't that a great color? I just, I love mint green. <sighs> so I think this particular one is from the four weeks for everybody program. The reason I believe that is because I've done the four weeks for everybody sample workout. And I think I recall this exercise or like a variation of this exercise. Yeah, um, it's kind of stupid to squat with the ball between your legs like that, <laughs> in my opinion. I'm pretty sure I tried it. I remember doing it when I did the uh, four weeks for everybody sample workout. I've said it before already and I will say it again. Holding the ball between your knees like this while you're squatting just makes the squat more complicated for no reason. And I would still argue that it actually makes the squat worse. Her ball that she's using also actually kind of looks bigger than the core ball that comes with the program. It could just be uh, my perspective though. I, I really don't know. But um, if that were the case and if her ball actually is bigger than I I mean, yeah, then that just is making your squat very not good. <laughs> so this is what I would call a compound exercise because she's doing a squat and she's combining it with the bicep curl. I'm personally not opposed to compound exercises, but I think it depends on the specific exercises that you are combining together. I personally wouldn't combine a basic squat with a bicep curl. In this scenario, let's also just pretend that that ball isn't even there because it's completely useless anyway, in my opinion. I have seen a bicep curl combined with a like a wall squat, a stability ball squat, stability ball squat, squatting with the stability ball against the wall and your back is being supported by the ball. So you're kind of using the ball to guide you, um, guide you up and down into your squat. And then when you press back up, you do the curl. I have seen that before. I think that's a little different. And ironically, you're still using a ball, but you're just using it in a more functional way, I think. <laughs> the upper body exercise that I would combine with the squat if I were is a press, like a shoulder press. Lower yourself down into your squat, press up through your heels. And then as you're pressing back up, use that momentum to press the dumbbells up into a shoulder press. And you'll find that that drive up through your hips and your legs actually will allow you to press more weight. And on top of challenging your squat muscles, it also really challenges your overall core stability as well. So I guess you can consider that my demo for this one. So I'm just showing you guys here the exercise I just got done describing. I'm just doing a squat to dumbbell press. I've got one dumbbell in each hand. As I'm pressing up through my heels out of that squat, I'm driving up through my hips and then using that momentum to press the dumbbells above into a shoulder press. Pretty sure I've showed you guys this one before. It's one of my favorite compound exercises because it is simple and it's not over the top, but it is still challenging. Okay, here's the next one. This one to me is another strange amalgamation of half truths. Brianna, that made no sense and you know it. I personally see nothing wrong with these exercises like individually, but rolling them all together like this as usual is just stupid in my opinion. If we break this exercise down, single leg Romania deadlift, a row, and then like a quarter of a pistol squat? I don't know, man. Let's read the caption and see if anything is there. One of the hardest things I've ever done. Try this 15 reps holding 12s times 12, 15 reps holding 12s times two sets on each 
leg. Okay, well, no help there. I think this is a classic example of something that's just hard for the sake of being hard. All these things are just rolled together into this beach body workout soup and it's just weird and it's too much in my opinion. Also before, if you notice, I said like her pistol squat, I said she did like a quarter rep of a pistol squat. Her pistol squat's not even a half rep. That's not me throwing shade at all whatsoever. Pistol squats are difficult. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing a pistol squat, but if you're a beginner or have a difficult time doing them, then give yourself a modification and help yourself out and like hold on to something while you're doing them. The wall, uh, uh, TRX straps or like, I don't know, a bar or something. Something that will help give you some support. It will still be challenging, but it will make the exercise a lot more doable and safer too. Doing it with some assistance in the beginning is okay because it'll help you build your strength and eventually you'll be able to progress to a full pistol squat without any support at all. I don't understand why so often people are afraid to like not be able to do something. So they try to do it anyway, but it's not very good at all because it's beyond what they're reasonably capable of doing presently. If you are a beginner, don't be afraid to say, you know what, I don't think I can do that right now, but I think I'm gonna try an alternative instead. There's nothing wrong with not being able to do something. There's nothing wrong with having to do modification if you can't do the full thing yet. With progress and consistency, you will get there. So I think I just inadvertently decided the demo for this one, um, an assisted pistol squat. Because pistol squats are tough for a lot of people, myself included, and that's okay. So let's do that. Here is a better version of how to do a pistol squat if you find them pretty tough. So there are many ways that you can do an assisted pistol squat, but I just, my number one suggestion, however, is to just make sure whatever you are holding onto is anchored firmly onto something sturdy. I'm using a handled resistance loop. I would have preferred a TRX strap, honestly, um, because the stretching of the loop was throwing me a little bit, um, but it's what I had. And I, so I had my resistance loop secured around a uh, Smith machine. And then I made sure the bar of the Smith was locked in place. And this worked for me. And then here I'm just performing my pistol squat, which as you can see, are difficult for me. <laughs> this footage is from the last couple of weeks as I've been back in the gym, back to lifting heavy since I started physical therapy and um, it's going well. So yeah, here is an assisted pistol squat. Biggest thing is if you wanna work on pistol squats, that's okay, but just do them assisted so that you don't get hurt and so that you can do them to the best of your ability until you progress to a full pistol squat without being assisted. Here's the next one. So this to me looks like an exercise called windshield wipers. It's often advertised, <laughs> advertised. It's often touted <laughs> as an abdominal exercise, but it's one of those ab exercises that involves lifting your legs up and using your hips. And this engages your hip flexors quite a bit, probably even more than your abdominals. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but just keep that in mind, like when you're putting together your abdominal workout. I personally don't think there's an issue with this exercise. I personally don't think that this exercise is stupid. I would offer a recommendation that she bends her knees to take some stress off her lower back. How do I know her lower back is straining? Well, you caught me, I don't. But because of how she looks while she's doing this, I would say that her lower back is probably straining quite a bit. Just bend your damn knees. It'll make it a little easier. Anyway, uh, have you guys figured out my gripe with this yet? It's the resistance band. What is supposed to be the point of the band around her feet like that. It's completely pointless. About as pointless as the door close button on an elevator. We all know you don't do anything, you stupid button sitting there taunting us. Here's how to do a windshield wiper, the non-ridiculous way, without adding a bunch of extra equipment for no reason. So I'm doing the exact same thing we just saw that person doing. These are pretty simple and straightforward. I'm lying down on my back, I have my arms outspread like this to help me out with balance. Sometimes people just um, kind of put their, tuck their hands under their butt and sit on their hands. Whenever I do windshield wipers, I personally like to outstretch my arms. I just think it feels better and it's more comfortable. And then I'm going nice and slow using my obliques as well as my hip flexors to slowly rotate my hips to either side of my mat. And as you can clearly see, I have my knees bent. 
This is taking a tremendous amount of strain off of my lower back. So these are a lot more comfortable and I don't have a resistance band around my feet. So this next one that we're gonna look at is a two for one special. This one person is a, I guess it's two like Instagram stories and she's going to be doing um, things that I have stuff to say about. <laughs> Um, I have no idea what Beachbody program this is from. After making these kinds of videos for so long, I feel like I've almost learned to kind of get an eye about which exercises are from like which programs, you know? But I really have no idea. <laughs> the second one reminds me of something I think I've seen from Nine Week Control Freak, but I, I really I really don't know for sure. And that first one, I just have no idea at all. So yeah, if anybody knows please chime off. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get to the words that I have to say for this first one. Full disclosure, my critique for this first one is 100% petty and nitpicky. And I'm not afraid to admit that. I'm just letting you guys know now. See the caption up there? It says, okay, try this pistol jump squat too. Pistol jump squat. So like a pistol squat, but she's jumping. Okay. This is not a pistol squat. In fact, we just talked about pistol squats a minute ago. This is not a pistol squat. This is a rear foot elevated single leg squat, AKA a Bulgarian split squat, AKA a split squat. Then she's also added the element of jumping. So I don't know, I guess, I guess this is a jumping Bulgarian split squat, a jumping split squat, something like that. I don't know. You know, in my wannabe fitness influencer days, I used to do these quite a bit, but now that I'm older and wiser. Now I would say just do a regular jump squat. And that's because I just don't feel like the elevating the back foot to do this is doing anything extra. I don't feel like it's doing anything beyond what a regular jump squat could do for you, but it does add more risk in that you could actually hurt your hip doing it this way. Oh man, she's also not wearing shoes. She's jumping around, not wearing shoes. Okay, that was my only uh, thing that I had to say about the first one. She, this is not a pistol squat. It's a split squat, Bulgarian split squat, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, um, so the second thing that she's doing is just ridiculous in my opinion. We're holding a hip thrust position, dumbbell in one hand doing a chest press while simultaneously, but also kind of randomly lifting one of her legs as she's pressing the weight. <sighs> Hey, uh, I have an idea for an exercise. You guys ready? How about we pick up a set of dumbbells, do about like 10 bicep curls, put them down, take like a two minute rest, and then repeat. What exactly is supposed to be the purpose of this exercise? What is the target muscle group here? Is it chest, glutes, hip flexors, dignity? I don't know. And I'm willing to bet that all of you watching this are thinking the exact same thing. Someone please comment exactly which program that this second exercise is from, please. Uh, because I wanna know which super trainer is responsible for this atrocity against humanity. <sighs> I'm so tired right now. Let's move on. Okay, this one is from Fire and Flow, and we know that because the caption on the bottom of her text says, uh, hashtag Fire and Flow test group. Okay, so this one is ridiculous, in my opinion. <laughs> but you know what else? This one is a P-Volve workout. Now by saying that, I'm not trying to imply that, uh, that Jericho or Elise completely like ripped this particular exercise off from P-Volve, but what I mean is I've seen a very similar exercise from the um, program, from the fitness program, P-Volve. By the way, I made a video about P-Volve a couple months ago and it didn't do that great analytically, so I'm just gonna go ahead and link it below so you can watch it. No pressure at all, you don't have to watch it if you don't want to, but if you don't watch it, I won't be able to feed my dogs next month. So personally, I wouldn't want that on my conscience, but that's just me. Anyway, so this exercise looks crazy to me. I know in P-Volve, their big thing was that their exercises were designed by a, like by a physical therapist. And based on that, I'm assuming the physical therapist saw this and like signed off on it. This is the part of the video where I'm propositioning you guys. Physical therapists, physical therapy assistants, uh, if you're in school to be a physical therapist, etc. please chime off below. Is this a physical therapy thing? Because to me, in terms of like just physical fitness, in terms of like just somebody like trying to work out, 
this looks ridiculous. Now for this particular Beachbody program, the super trainers who made it have spun it a little bit differently because they've kind of added, they're kind of doing like this raising motion with their arms and balancing on one leg and raising and lowering uh, the opposite leg. This looks insane to me. Not only does this look insane to me, but this also looks like it would put your shoulders in a pretty compromising position. Um, but remember my shoulders are babies and cry about everything. So I don't know, maybe it's just me looking at it and seeing it that way. I have no demo for this one. I guess I'm leaving this on more of a question. Physical therapists and physical therapy assistants, all you guys. Now is your time to shine. You guys chime off below. In conclusion, well, that was a fun ride. I use the word fun sarcastically, of course. Here's a funny story. The other day I was at physical therapy. My physical therapist and I were chatting and he uh, said to me that he and a friend of his um, had like, started trying out beach body workouts. And um, he said that they'd recently tried out P90X and he was like, have you ever heard of beach body? And I was like, oh. Have I? <laughs> now I've been working with him for several weeks now. He knows I do YouTube. He knows I'm a personal trainer. He knows I'm as cool to be a dietitian. Like we've talked about all that kind of stuff. He also knows that I'm vehemently anti MLM. I know he is too, because we have both discussed our disdain for multi-level marketing before. Funny thing is he didn't know that Beachbody was an MLM though. P90X actually came out before Beachbody adopted the multi-level marketing structure. I think P90X was like the early 2000s and Beachbody became a multi-level marketing, like they adopted that structure like in 08 or 09, I think it was. But it, it was funny because when I mentioned to him that, oh, Beachbody's an MLM, I could tell he didn't know because he was like, he narrowed his eyes and he was like, oh, it is, is it? <laughs> and then he was like, so what do you think of P90X? And I said, honestly, this is strictly my opinion. Honestly, I think, that you should stick to the older ones, including P90X. I just think that overall, the older programs are just better. That's just my opinion. And P90X is one of them. I've discussed this openly before with a lot of you guys. I think the older Beachbody workouts are just better because they're not as over the top, mostly. They're not as over the top. And just like, they're just like not as crazy, I don't think. And I think part of the reason for that is because P90X was before they adopted the MLM structure. So they didn't have super trainers pumping out programs on a rolling basis. And a lot of people don't know that Beachbody hasn't always been, uh, hasn't always had the multi-level marketing structure. Beachbody used to be just like work workout DVDs for people to work out at home in their living room, Jane Fonda style. And like, that was it. I also think before the MLM structure got adopted, I think the trainers were probably under much less pressure to, uh, to pump out programs on like this rolling basis like they do now. In my opinion, the workouts were actually not as bad. I think they were halfway decent, like back in the day anyway. But I just don't get the vibe that back in the day, they were trying to be the most like the over the top craziest thing. In my opinion, these, these newer programs have just made it things have just gotten more and more ridiculous I feel like they have to be the best they have to be doing the best they have to be like number one doing the most cutting edge thing so then they come up with the stuff that we talk about here on my channel anyway I think I've I think I've summed it up here my camera is about to overheat and I have to show you guys the dogs I know I'm contractually obligated to do that so I'm gonna wrap this up you made it to this point in the video thank you so very much for watching I really appreciate it like if you enjoyed this subscribe if you want to see more follow me on the gram and I will see you guys in the next one bye oh there you are where's Zeus at <laughs> Oh, there you are. Hey, boy. Wow, you guys are just so comfortable. I know. Such a hard knock life for all of you. Isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Who's a handsome boy? You're such a stud. You are such a freaking stud. You'll fall. Oh, it did a smile. Oh, what a handsome boy. Ma'am. 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 Uh, Alpha? Okay, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Say bye, baby. Okay, yes, thank you.